Hi everyone and welcome to my channel where I chit chat and talk about art and hopefully keep you company while you make your own art and get creative myself. I am continuing with my series of um, wildlife or woodland animals just because I'm trying to force myself to stick to one theme because there are always so many distractions. The other day I saw somebody um, painting in oil and suddenly I missed that luscious and buttery feeling of oil paints and then I saw um, a video on making your own paints and suddenly I wanted to make my own paints. I did, granted I did make my own gum arabic solution for um, watercolor which is basically um, the binder for watercolor if I wanted to make it, but I made it for different purposes to, to experiment with my uh, technique and also to make um, lickable glue out of it. So that made me think about grinding my own pigments and all of that sort of stuff, but nope, I am sticking with my animals for now. <laughs> And as you can see, I started with a very light color, which is just the base for this little bear. And I'm going darker in very traditional watercolor fashion. Um, I am not wetting my page beforehand because I like it to be a bit more dry just to have that control. And of course, it's not going to be as flowy as, I don't know, the way I would make a background or something. But I do want you to see that it's a bear in the end, so I think that's a very nice um, technique. It's nice that you can vary uh, the use of your paint to your needs. Um, but this time I did make an effort not to use as much gouache as I did the last time because, I mean, I love darks. I love dark um, backgrounds because they make um, the subject pop and they give a kind of a mysterious feeling to the whole thing but I also really enjoy the lightness and the transparency of watercolor so I'm just doing something else today and we'll probably alternate between both <clears throat> depending on the feeling I get from the reference photo so yeah I'm just trying to give everything a little bit of um, unity, I guess, or a feeling of cohesiveness by um, predetermining my color palette. I stick to similar colors in these little paintings that I do, <clears throat> and they're very earth-toned and brown and yellow and um, burnt sienna and some green in there, sometimes a little bit of purple, but you might have noticed that um, most of my paintings do not contain a lot of blue or um, pink or something like that, just because this is what I'm drawn to. And I want, I don't know, I want to explore this palette a bit more before I move on to the next. <clears throat> so, this is pretty straightforward. I'm working the darker shades into the light ones before they have completely dried, like they may have slightly dried a little bit, but not completely, and that's why they're, the colors are so runny and uh, floating into each other. But for a bear, as you can see, this looks much too fluffy. I mean, a bear is not a, an apartment cat. So, um, I will give this whole thing a bit more texture later, and that's, you know, you have to... Sometimes it's just, you can just feel what's missing, and sometimes you really have to think about all the elements um, that you have in your painting and how you can make it a little bit more intriguing to the eye. Um, you don't just think about color and form and line especially when you're drawing, but you also think about texture. And um, I think it's really important as well to not overwork everything. I have a tendency to overwork my paintings, I know that, and especially with watercolor, you can really tell when it's overworked. Um, so I'm, I'm working on it. 
I'm trying not to do too much and keep them a little bit more loose, but yeah, at least when you see me doing the background in a minute, you will see that I did not put too much detail in there because it's just important to um, choose the places where you want detail and where you want to lead the eye. I think that's one of the reasons why I prefer old media sometimes to new ones, old film or even photography, because not everything is so crystal clear that you can see every single hair on an animal or every single, I don't know, wrinkle in a face. Not that there's anything wrong with wrinkles, but yeah, just like you think about form and value and shape and line and color, you think about detail and structure as well. I did not stick to my reference photo exactly for that reason, but I still wanted to have an important background. I didn't want to ignore it completely and I wanted both background and animal to progress at similar rates. Maybe not exactly at the same rate, but at least similar. It's, it's a process. It's sometimes hard to believe in a painting. Actually, this little bear, I didn't like the result as much, but I learned that people will like things that I don't like and the other way around like some things I make that I really really like um, when I post them somewhere or I send them to a friend along with other things that I don't appreciate as much oftentimes the ones that I don't like myself will be the favorite of my friend or audience <laughs> in whatever form so I decided to show you this bear anyway and I'm not going to give you a detailed tutorial because it's the way I work not necessarily the what would work for you so maybe it will inspire you just as it inspires me to watch others and I keep learning that there is no one way to do things like the other way uh, other day I watched a tutorial about gouache and gouache is usually a medium that's more like for designing and for learning color but I saw um, an artist use gouache similar to watercolor or oil in the sense that he did a lot of washes with it and it turned out beautiful it's not always you can experiment with paints and mediums and see how you can make them work for you. So what I'm doing may not be traditionally the way to do it, but it still works for me and why not? So I said this is just about keeping each other company, I guess, because sometimes I need that extra push because you spend a lot of time alone when you make art and Sometimes it's just nice to hear someone talk in the background, to listen to a podcast or talk to someone about things that interest you. And I'm hoping that my videos will provide that for you as well. I watched um, the Bob Ross film yesterday. It's on Netflix. And as soon as I saw it, I told my husband I have to watch that because <laughs> it's funny how um, everybody who hears that I make artsy videos says oh you have to be the next Bob Ross because he's so well known that everyone even those not really in the realm of art know him and actually like him so on one hand <laughs> that's um, really nice because um, he's a likable personality so sure you would want to be like Bob Ross on the other hand I know that he has a certain style and um, certain motifs that he stuck to. So, um, of course, I'm not going to be the next Bob Ross <laughs> because I'm not painting mountains all the time. Um, but I enjoy his personality, the way he talked. Actually, I think you can use him for ASMR 
to fall asleep or relax because he's so quiet and um, just also so positive. And the reason why I like him more than, say, Thomas Kincaid, I mean, they're, they, you may consider both a little bit in the kitsch realm, and I'm not saying this necessarily in a negative way because I do like kitsch. <laughs> At least some forms of kitsch do speak to me. So I don't want to be that elitist kind of, oh, only that art is real art and things like that. But um, I feel that Bob Ross really relied a lot on his brushmanship. That was very probably unique, I'm not sure, because I didn't live, I, I was alive in the 80s, yes, but I was too young to think about these kind of things. But I think the way he paints with oil is not the traditional way. Sorry for the jump here. I keep forgetting to press my um, record button on my phone. That's why you can see a lot more detail. Um, so I've worked a little bit on the fur and um, carved out a little bit more of those darks and now I'm using gouache to paint in some grass. Anyway, about Bob Ross, um, what I like more about him than, say, Thomas Kincaid, I mean, Thomas Kincaid is very, um, like, saccharine artificial sweetener <laughs> over the top, sugar-coated. Um, in his themes, uh, which speaks to some people, that's perfectly fine. Uh, Bob Ross probably not as much, but I feel that the biggest difference is how Bob, Bob Ross was actually a teacher who um, wanted people to be able to paint as he did, because a lot of people will um, try to keep their secrets to themselves, uh, and um, I don't know, I guess feel special for um, their skill and feel unique and not share too much with others. And Bob Ross, I feel, was really proud of the accomplishment of his students. Like when they excelled, he was happy about that. And that's the kind of person that we need nowadays and always. So... Yeah, I really enjoyed watching the movie. What made me sad was... I'm not going to talk about the plot too much because I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, but um, uh, what made me sad is that just thinking about the fact that he was celebrated as such a hero back then and something like that would not be possible today. Like, you could not... Even if you had tremendous skill, you could probably never hold up a TV show for such a long time with such popularity because you could paint. I mean, there are so many amazing artists out there and if they could make, if they could all make a living <laughs> from uh, showing and teaching their process, that would be amazing, of course. Um, but there is just so much competition these days and it's, it's always about who's best and who's even better and that's kind of sad. I think some things were easier a few decades ago, but yeah, I guess um, in return we have things that make life easier these days that they didn't have back then, like the internet, so every generation has its own challenge, I guess. But what? What I'm a little bit mad about is how Bob Ross was so quick finishing his oil paintings that he kind of changed my perception of how long I need to plan for a painting. When I visit, visited my sister a few weeks ago, or even months, um, I wanted to paint some flowers for her and I wanted to do them in oil. And because I started so late, I ended up hating the end result so much. And I knew that if I had just the chance to add another layer, I could have fixed them, but I didn't have time for the paint to dry. And I think that when you want to make an oil painting in the traditional way, you should really plan for at least a week. You could probably finish it 
quicker but i mean alla prima is amazing but if you're not john singer sergeant and you're a beginner like me then you should probably plan for more time so you can work with all those layers and all those glazes <laughs> that um are really what makes oil special and because as long as it's wet you really can't do anything with it as when you go in with a new color you'll probably just make mud and so you have to wait and those waiting times are so annoying and Bob Ross just did it in half an hour so that's pretty amazing it's um, not necessarily the type of drawing that I want uh, the painting um, that I want to make but I know that he has had a resurgence in popularity these past years and there are a lot of Bob Ross instructors um, the film, I will tell you, will give you an insight into whether you want to support things with the name Bob Ross on them or not. I will only tell you so much, you'll have to figure out the rest on your own. Um, but there are some dark secrets there that we didn't know about. So just be careful when you see a product with Bob Ross on it and do your research before you buy it and just to make sure the money goes to the people who deserve it. I hope you enjoyed my little talk here <laughs> and I hope you stay safe and I hope you have a little bit more sunshine than we do here in Germany and I will see you next Friday for my next, I'll just call it art chat. Take care!